Hi, I'm Malini and welcome back to another episode of The Girl Tribe. It's important to just keep at your dream and things will work out. Why are we asking the question, isn't he promiscuous? He asked me, how have you resisted the urge to have an extramarital affair with a Bollywood actor? Yeah. <laughs> As you know, this show is very close to my heart. And it all started because of a Facebook group that I began called Malini's Girl Tribe. The group is a place for women to talk, share, support, empower, and inspire each other. And I guess it was only a matter of time before it became something much bigger than I could ever have imagined it would. That's when I realized I had to make the show. So here we are. Welcome to the Girl Tribe, girls, and hopefully you guys too. Watch and learn. to all the girls out there, a part of Miss Malini's Girl Tribe. On this episode, I'm going to tell you what we've been talking about on the Girl Tribe, so you can join the conversation. For instance, women juggling work and family. Why do we feel so guilty? Have we figured out a work-life balance? Do we even need to? Why doesn't anyone ever ask a man this question? The tribe discussed this long and hard. Also today, I have the lovely Aduna Babani joining me in the studio. She's literally one of my favorite people on the planet. But first, let me tell you about our girl boss. You know, I realize that there are a lot of super boss ladies out there, especially on the tribe. And on my show, I wanted to show you ladies off. You girls are doing some very cool things that you started on your own. And I want everyone to see that. So check out the story of this kick-ass girl boss living her dream. Hi, I'm Neha Sahu and I'm the co-founder of Just For Kicks. We work with little children in underprivileged schools across India, developing life skills using football. The most important thing is to know yourself extremely well and then dream big. Keep chasing your dreams, keep at it all the time. There'll be a lot of situations, a lot of people, unsolicited advice, difficulties, but it's important to just keep at your dream and things will work out. For all little girls out there, give it your best in whatever you choose to do. I know tiny girls as young as six years old playing some fantastic football and teaching elders how to live life. Hopefully by the time you're grown up, the entire world will be a level playing field thanks to you. Now in 2018, we've become a much larger organization under the name of Enabling Leadership. We are using football, music and Lego to develop global leaders and role models in schools. I'm Neha Sahu and I'm proud to be a part of the Girl Tribe. And we're proud to have a kick-ass girl boss like you in the tribe, Neha. Not only did you build this incredible program for life skills in India, but you've taken underprivileged children to cities all over the world to play. How amazing is that? They get a taste of international culture and sportsmanship that will only enhance their development. And I'm pretty sure you're making dreams come true. Bam, Neha, you're a girl boss if I ever saw one, which is why you're going on my girl tribe, Wall of Fame. And now it's time to introduce you to one of my favorite people in the world and an inspiration to us all. She's incredible, she runs her own beauty empire and sometimes she scales mountains for her birthday. The one and only Aduna Bhavani. Welcome to The Girl Tribe, the show that I have been dying to make for, I think, my entire life. Thank you, Odd, for being here. I wanted to tell everyone three things about you that I don't think everyone knows. Okay, here we go. One, Odd loves really tight hugs. And I know this because you're one of those people who's like, hug, like, that's it. Like, I'm never going to let go, which I love. Uh, you wanted to be a singer, a horse trainer, and a gymnast. Yeah. Which is awesome. And you love the color purple. That's, that's more than three that's things you didn't know but about But you're wearing me. purple and I've got pink. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for being here today. I've just been like dying to do this show. And you're one of my favorite people to have these conversations with. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. So, you know, somebody asked me a really interesting question. They said, okay, it should be fine for you to wear what you want. But knowing what you know about how the world is, is it better for you to save yourself unwanted attention and not wear certain things? 
And you as a parent, what do you do with that? I am constantly on a daily basis faced with this dilemma because my daughter is 17 years old. She likes to wear what she likes to wear and what's in fashion. And if it's a pair of shorts, why the hell shouldn't she be able to wear it? Right. Um, in the same breath, how am I able to protect her from the kind of unwanted attention that that may cause? here in this scenario. Mm -hmm. So that's the dilemma, right? So the dilemma is how much do I protect and how much do I empower? But the sad thing is, and there's even like a video that was heart wrenching, which is like rape culture in Haryana that's on <coughs> the group, someone posted it, which is that they think, well, if a girl's wearing jeans, that's also an open invitation. I don't know where to, where, where do you draw the line? Where do you draw where the do line? Where do you draw the line? I mean, I'm asking myself these questions perpetually now, a young woman growing up in this society how do I advise her so that she's not scared to death of going out to live her life? Yeah. And I struggle with this too, because on the, you know, on the blog, obviously we cover celebrities, we might cover music video. And then someone said, well, aren't you propagating, you know, this culture of Eve teasing and voyeurism by talking about uh, a celebrity's look or her outfit? Mm. Or, you know, does the next item song make that same mistake? People should be able to make the distinction, right? Yeah, and I think even in uh, in even in in the in the sort of friend circles that we may move in, without malice, without meaning to, they may say things that doesn't put women in a very good light and think that it's just funny and ha ha and move on to the next. But I really believe that if you're a parent or a person who's in a position where you have to show and teach people around you, your kids, for example, whether we like it or not, the way we react to something, it could be the what, what we think is funny, what we think is our sense of humor. It will translate onto the next generation. And if people are constantly making jokes on women, then not only will the boys think, of the next generation that it's okay to make a joke on women but even the girls will will come to believe yeah. that that's okay to yeah. be treated that way mm. it's not cool I had the same thing so I had a bunch of like and these are friend, my friends that I've known for a long time and we were sitting around probably late night and they're talking about this girl that they think is beautiful right obviously they say she's so hot <clears throat> and then sort of so like one of them insinuated that he's hooked up with her and I was so mad that he said this comment because one, if you have, why, like, what is this kiss and tell thing? Mm. Because unfortunately, you're going to make people think that she's promiscuous or whatever it is. I mean, why aren't we asking the question, isn't he promiscuous or she <laughs> promiscuous? True. I'm not saying yeah. it's all men. It's, I'm um, not saying it's all women. I think there are uh, uh, many, many, many amazing men. Many of those men are, are my friends who actually share a similar view or a similar outlook. Um, you know, I think there is many women propagating patriarchy mm -hmm. or a, a point of view, maybe without even realizing it. So my whole take on it is not to point the finger at what's wrong and what's right, but doing what you can as an individual to, you know, clean up your own house. Say what you believe, do what you actually feel is right. You know? And I think what you said is so true. There, It's not <clears throat> just this women's campaign. It's not just like only girls can do this. And the reason I've only let girls join for right now, the Girl Tribe, is because unfortunately on Facebook or any other social media platform, a lot of guys are just there to say like, hi, beautiful, can I have mm. your number or some mm. nonsense. And I mm. found that in this group that just has all these girls, there's just so... One, they're really nice to each other. They're very supportive and it's kind of a safe space to talk to each other. But having said that, I love that I think you and I, and I'm sure a lot of people know men who are really open-minded, you know, they hurt as much as we do. Uh, that's why I think that, you know, I mean, we're, we're actually very fortunate and mm -hmm. I'm extremely grateful that the men who are around in, in my life are very, very conscious and aware. And if they're not, I prod them yeah. every now and again and remind yeah. them. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're, they're totally supportive and they don't think that women like us are trying to say that women are right and men are wrong. It's absolutely not that yeah. for me. Yeah. Let's just create that equal playing field. You know how it is sometimes you only think of the really funny, snarky thing to say <clears throat> like three days after the experience. You yeah. know? So <laughs> I was like speaking at this event as I just won like number one most influential woman for impact. And so I went to Goa to speak at this conference and I felt really boss lady for half an hour, did this presentation. And then there was this guy who's like a very senior member 
of the journalist fraternity. And he had to come on stage and ask me two questions, right? And then open it up to the audience. So one, he, he said- He had the choice of any question. Any question, literally. <clears throat> okay? So he asked me, he said, you know, I've always wanted to ask you this. I'm like, okay, great. This is going to be a brand building or my journey. He's like, I've always wanted to ask you, how have you resisted the urge to have an extramarital affair with a Bollywood actor? And first of all, like, think about the sentence that you had. You could have asked me anything. <laughs> You could have learned something, you know? I'm flabbergasted. I wish I didn't. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Check. And then the other thing that really bothered me about this, actually, and I haven't told anyone this, is that as soon as this happened, so I, of course, sent like this tweet saying, you know, great experience, but it was marred by this last thing that happened. Mm. And like in five minutes, I got a phone call from someone I know who I really respect, senior person in the industry, who says, oh, I heard what happened. Can you please delete the tweet? And I was like, why? And then he was kind of like, oh, well, you know, you're um, raising money right now. You're trying to build a business. So all these people know each other. And I was like, I'm right to have defended myself in this situation. Absolutely. Uh, but so then what do you do? Like, at what point do you say, okay, I don't want to damage my business because I know, again, it comes back to that. Should I wear this mini skirt mm -hmm. out or should I just... I know that Pick my when I ha had a similar situation, I'm mean, not not as yeah. hardcore as that, but a situation where, you know, uh, somebody who, who who I consider a friend made a comment, um, a joke be amongst friends, and I found it inappropriate. Yeah. And I said something about it. And it was a comment on a wife, mm. husband-wife scenario. And I said that I don't think it's appropriate for whatever reason I said. And it's not that I'm, you know, not able to take a joke, joke or whatever. Yeah. But I think this kind of humor is is not appropriate in the kind of world mm. we are now living in. Yeah. And if you as a parent have that approach and use this kind of humor, it will eventually permeate through to the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. It was all happening on, on, a, on a message and my hands were shaking as I was... As I was making my point, I didn't want to offend anybody, yeah. but I did feel that if if another joke just goes by without me saying what I really feel, how am I going to feel about that then? I should be able to speak up. And, you know, eventually I thought as I, I wrote it in the message that, you know, it may be that I'll get a lot of uh, controversial answers back from this, yeah. but I'm going to say what I think here. Mm. And if you don't like it, then fair enough. Okay, thank you so much for being here. I've asked everyone to write a pledge, a pledge to yourself as a woman, something that you're going to do. And I'm going to give you a little pledge card. What will your pledge be? Okay, this is something I've been consciously made to think about right now. Oh, I don't need my glasses to write. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. And why have you decided to pledge this? Because I feel like I've been a complete victim of consumerism. Mm. Um, <laughs> I love clothes. I love fashion. I've loved shopping. I've loved, um, you know, furnishing my home, whatever it is. And I think um, for me to uh, make a mark or, or, or make a statement, I need to sort of practice what I preach. I think it can have a very uh, powerful impact on my kids and how they choose to uh, spend their money the decisions they make. Thank you. Will you add that to my pin board, my girl tribe? Absolutely. Pledge board. You like that picture? That's from our <laughs> football. Football face off. <laughs> okay. I shall be like that. Does that work? It's perfect. Thank you so much. It Thank was you for awesome having to have you here. It was a pleasure. I will see you soon. I'm, I'm taking my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Before I go, I want to show you just what kind of awesome ladies my girl tribe is made of. Every day they inspire, comfort, and stimulate my mind. To show you what I mean, here's a peek into just a few of the posts and conversations going on in the girl tribe right now. You know, an overwhelming number of women mention the constant juggle between work and family and being made to feel guilty about it. Kavita Baga says she's worked like a dog for 24 years and is now a new mother at 45 and learning to love like a puppy. The point is, you could be anything at any age. Pooja Tibangera says every parent thinks they've failed if their daughter isn't married after her education. They're mostly afraid of their family and society's reaction, of how they will question them, 
the classic, all your friends are getting married except you. But that has to change, and that change starts with you. And that brings us to the end of another episode of Girl Tribe. Thank you for watching and witnessing the start of something new, and I think wonderful. I believe a conversation is the first step towards changing mindsets. Now I want to leave you with a question that came to my mind while I was talking to Aduna. When do you decide to draw the line between knowing when to empower and when to protect? Should we wear whatever we want, whenever we want, when we know predators are lurking around? It should be, right? But is it safe to wear a miniskirt walking down the street today? I don't know. It makes me mad even having to think about it. But I'd like to hear your point of view. Join Malini's Girl Tribe on Facebook and tell me honestly what you think. And until next week, good vibes only.